The person that you can completely map and who only does positive things for you, it's like A, you don't know that person. B, they're not communicating with you, nor you with them. Maybe they're just subordinating themselves to you or you to them. And you're not growing. You want someone who can... It's A real relationship is a wrestling match. It's a grappling, it's a grappling phenomena that you both emerge transformed from. And that's what people want. They don't want a pushover. Not, not unless there's something wrong with them. You know, a narcissistic person who never wants to be challenged will want a partner who does nothing but deliver exactly what they're told to deliver, but they will mistreat them beyond belief. What does the optimal relationship look like in terms of positive and negative emotion? You might say, well, utopia, nothing but positive interactions. It's like, no. Imagine you get people to code the interactions they have with their partner during the day, you know, you sample it. You say, was that interaction positive or negative? And then what you're trying to do is predict the longevity of the relationship. Okay, so here's the data. If it falls under five positive interactions to one negative interaction, the relationship doesn't continue. Fair enough, too much negative. That's easy to understand. If it exceeds 11 positive to one negative, the relationship doesn't last. Why? No challenge. Right? What do you want from your partner? Bliss? No. No, no, you don't. Well, that's a representation of Diana. You could think of Diana. There's an opposite, uh, Durga, in Hinduism. And she comes forth if you make the proper sacrifices to Kelly. But I wanted to show you alternative representations from different cultures of these archetypal forms. This is Diana, positive feminine, whoop, multi-breasted, right? She's the thing that nourishes the world. And so that would be, on one hand, your mother, who obviously protects you from the terrible aspects of fire and danger, but also nature conceptualized as the positive feminine in general. The source of all fertility and all food and all beings and all good things. Something that you want to have on your side, that's for sure. And you might say, if you acted heroically properly and you played the metagame and not the game, and you made the proper sacrifices, then you'd never encounter Kelly, you'd only encounter her benevolent counterpart. And so then you might say, well, does she even exist then? That's something that's very interesting, is because the degree to which the terrible part of the world manifests itself in your life is proportionate to how insufficient you are. And we don't know the full extent of that. If you got your act together completely, maybe all the suffering would disappear from your life. Or at least maybe all the unbearable suffering. And maybe all the suffering, or the unbearable suffering, from the lives of people around you, too. And you already know that, because there are people that you'll go to in a crisis that you can rely on and you know they'll help you and you wonder what the world would be like if you were like that and everyone else was like that too we'd have a lot fewer crises and the ones that we do have would be a lot more manageable and so when people say well why is the world so rife with suffering one answer to that is because we're not yet what we could be and at least that's an answer that we have some control over right you're not going to talk god out of making the world suffer, that's for sure, and you're not going to negotiate directly with Mother Nature, but you might be able to put yourself together a little bit and see if that works, at least it's under your control, and God only knows what the upper limit of that might be. Well, here's the decomposition of the, of the fundamental archetype. The dragon of chaos differentiates, on the one hand, into the feminine, that's the unknown, and the feminine differentiates further into the negative feminine and the positive feminine. The negative feminine is the reason for witch hunts. It's the reason for, um, you know, there's a whole group online called Men Going Their Own Way, M-G-T-O-W. That's a very interesting group to go study. There's lots of them. I don't know how many of them there are. and Most of them are older. Many of them are men who've been through a particularly horrifying divorce for one reason or another. And they're, they've had enough of women. So they, they tell the young men that they're teaching, Never have a permanent relationship. Never share your territory with a woman. Never share your possessions. Make sure you never li live together and don't stay with one long enough to enter a common law relationship because you'll be stripped of everything that you have. Well, that's a hell of a thing to be telling people. But what's happened is that the female has been manifested in their life only as the negative archetype. And they've got that confused with all women. And that's partly you know, you got to ask yourself, if you know the mythological stories, maybe if you made the right sacrifices, you wouldn't have so much trouble with women. I can make dinner. I can take care of my family. I can undertake this job at work. That makes me a decent father. That's part of being 
a good per that's part of, of being a good person. The question is, what's at the pinnacle of that? At the upper end of the abstraction hierarchy, because these things should be organized all the way up into a complete hierarchy. What does it mean to be a good person? Well, it means, we, we've walked through it, it means you win the set of games. You go out into the world and explore and you bring back what you've found and you build yourself out of it and you share it with other people. That's, that's an old, old story. That's no different than the story of the collective hunt. It's exactly the same thing, right? You, you build yourself into someone that can has a, have a long-term relationship with someone of the opposite sex, generally speaking, so that you can bring children into the world and turn them into exploratory heroes and stabilize the state. That's what should be at the top and that thing that's at the top, it's the same thing. It's the integration of all of those things into the same thing. And that's the same as the sun. That's the same as the halo. It's the same as the thing that emerges from the belly of the whale. It's all of those things. And you also know that because you know that you have the capacity for admiration. It's in you. It's in you. It's locked into your biology and it's locked into your sociology. You see what you admire and that's a partial representation of the ultimate ideal. It's as simple as that. So I, I kind of nested this, eh? so I should just explain this diagram briefly. So it was a, a map I tried to make in some sense of my own identity. I mean, just using myself as an example of, of someone typically situated in society. So, you know, I have this role, which is kind of a high resolution role. I'm a father and a husband, and I also run a business. And so the father and husband thing is sort of nested inside of that because it's dependent on my economic success to some degree and then that's nested inside a capitalist structure and then that's nested inside well I said American personality but it's sort of that's good enough and then that's nested inside the humanistic Western personality and inside the Judeo-Christian personality and that's all nested inside this thing that's best conceptualized as something approximating the exploratory hero and so that's a that's a value structure that's and you know you can different you can differentiate that to a much higher level than father and husband. And we did that when we decomposed things right down to, you know, their motor actions. And you want what you want. And this is, I think, there's something that's transcendent about this. You want all those things stacked up. So they're all operating properly at the same time, all the way up and, and all the way down. And I don't even know how far down means. Like if you get all those things together, your physiology be organized and oriented properly too. Oh, you know, and that means your organs work properly and the micro elements of them work properly and all the way down. And then if everything is organized like that too, the society starts to work. And everything starts to organize itself along a horizontal axis where each level of the structure supports every other le level. And you can feel that, I believe. That's what you feel when you're engaged in doing something meaningful. You can feel those things coming together. And you can also feel like that, that as, a, as a kind of strength. It pushes you forward instead of pulling you backwards. So, and it, I, I think that your, our nervous systems are very sophisticated and they orient us in time and space and they can tell us when they're in the right place at the right time. And people love that. And I think you experience that when you're deeply engaged in music as well. It puts you there momentarily, right? Say you're in a cathedral and you're listening to some remarkable music with the light pouring in, you're in trees because that's what a cathedral is. That's what the, that's what the, the arches is, it's light coming through the trees. That's what's represented in the stones. You're in there, you're looking at the light. It's, it's, it's pouring down at you. You're, in this, you're at the center of the world and there's a great piece of music playing. And it's an, an indication that everything is stacking up along this one pole. That's what it's supposed to produce. That produces a religious experience if it works properly. You know that, you go to rock concerts, you go listen to music. So what the hell do you think you're doing there? If you're not having a quasi-religious experience, you think you'd go otherwise? And just because you don't know that that's, what hap that's what's happening doesn't mean it isn't what's happening. People have been gathering together in groups and transcending the limits of their pathological individuality through music and ritual since the beginning of time. Why would it be any different for us? And the lights there, that's what the light show is for. It's the same thing, it's just that the religious element of it is stripped away, partly because we've criticized that to death so carelessly that we can't integrate it anymore into ceremonies like that. And I mean, fair enough. But, but it's not like that comes without a loss.